The year is 2010. The World Cup was hosted in an African country for the first time. Kanye dropped the best album of all time, and Cartoon Network is still trying to do that live action shit. Destroy! Build! Destroy! This was a really weird time in Cartoon Network's history. After the flop that was CN Real, it did eventually return to great form with shows like Adventure Time, Regular Show, Gumball, etc. But in between those two points, there was an era of CN that nobody really brings up when talking about its history the Cartoon Institute. <laughs> The Cartoon Institute was CN's way of reintroducing the What A Cartoon format from the 90s. It was designed to give animators and writers a platform to create their own pilots without that pesky network interference. It was spearheaded by Craig McCracken and Rob Renzetti, two legends in the game. However, this one had proved to be far less successful than the cartoon cartoon format. 35 shorts were planned, but only 14 of them were made, and from those 14, only two of them became their own shows. What's worse is that they didn't even premiere on the channel itself, they were just dumped onto the website in Vimeo. Jeez, that was a fucking throwback. When was the last time anyone used Vimeo? So, let's look at this object failure of a show and watch every single Cartoon Institute pilot. Three Dog Band is exactly what it sounds like. A trio of dogs who are all in a band are preparing for a gig they have at this nightclub, but along the way, they have to deal with your classic cartoon shenanigans and stuff. There isn't much in the way of memorable dialogue in this one, as for the most part, the animation and slapstick is doing the talking. I feel like that worked with this pilot in some sense, but as a good friend Alpha J once told me, most people who watch a pilot don't care about the theme or anything else. They're mostly interested in the characters interacting with that theme. And Three Dog Band did an alright job at this, I guess. All three characters have the exact same goal which is performing but they all get to that goal in different ways slide is more interested in the hose and the gig newbie gets like an a vending machine and spazzes out for no fucking reason and this nigga whose name i don't remember and i'm not gonna go back to watch this so i'm just gonna call german dog actually just doesn't really do much in this and yes that is his only character trait being fucking german this is highly sophisticated, technologically delicate instrument. They don't interact with each other that much either, which sucks because I'm all about that, especially if it's a pilot. But I will say the art and music pretty much carried this entire short for me. I like how it's a mixture of that old school slapstick animation with an art style that was leaning into that new 2010s look. I also like the comic book style thing they went for, especially with the collisions and stuff. The colors, particularly in the nightclub scene, were especially done well too. And the music, I can't lie, the music kind of slapped at the end. Of course they show the black people the answer to it first. Nigga! I don't know if it was a budget thing or the episode file that I got got corrupted, but the sound effects just kind of stop at a certain point and it's really jarring, I won't hold you. But overall, Street Dog Bend is okay as a pilot, but I couldn't see much room for it to go as a full show with what they gave us. Alright, Baloo Baloo's Funch Park is a special short. By that I mean I was lost for about 60% of it. It's one of those things that'll make you feel like you're just off something when you're watching it. Don't you have anything else? <sighs> the pilot is about two teens, Andy and Jeff, who work at a fun park where this fucking thing is the main attraction. However, it kind of sucks at bringing in the money, and this bootleg Doug Dimmodome over here threatens to shut the place down if they don't make any money. And from here... Shit just kinda happens. I truly don't think I'm fucking baked enough to properly explain what anything is happening here. Mainly because the episode doesn't explain anything itself. Like this nigga is just from some unnamed planet and he has the power to time travel or travel to different dimensions. And they solve the whole money issue by getting this gross box with lips that can multiply anything. <laughs> Art style isn't my thing either, and the choice of colors is just really gross. Like, browns and greens, my nigga, really? I'm glad this one didn't become a whole show, because honestly, this is getting to that problem solver's level of uncanny for me. I don't got next on none of this shit. Alright, Captain Sturdy. <laughs> Sturdy. I'm not too crazy about this short either. I think it has a good idea behind it, and I think turning the story about pensions and business lingo into a story about superheroes, turning into a bunch of softies was really creative, but again, there isn't enough for me to say that I'd want to see more of it. It tries to pull off a bunch of these emotionally charged moments, but once again, it's a pilot. It should be more focused on introducing the concept of superhero pension funds and how superheroes became pencil pushing dweebs. There's a scene where this PC soup, which I'm assuming stands for political correctness, messing up an entire mission because he's talking about how he's a troubled soul or some shit. Tro will enroll them in trade school. If our education system hadn't failed these boys, they wouldn't be f liberals. 
The art is very reminiscent of the 90s era of CN, having an almost Dexter's Lab type of shape language and color. Even some of the backgrounds are straight up ripped from PPG and Dexter's Lab. I don't want to go too heavy on the animation because I know it probably had very limited resources and even more limited time to make it, but I still have to be a fair critic, alright? It's kinda mid. Hold on, this shit has a sequel? So, Captain Sturdy, the originals, I can't fucking believe this. This one feels way more structured and planned out. Captain Sturdy and Div have to defeat an old foe, Dr. Destructo. Only problem is, the squad is old as fuck now and aren't able to use their powers very well. Fellas, you remember Commander Guts? Since the operation, I go by Brianna. Oh, well... Good for her. This one actually has some wholesome moments too that I do enjoy. Especially when they meet the older Dr. Destructo and they're just kinda chatting like two older guys reminiscing about the past. Strangely, I kinda dig this. There's way more jokes as well. I'm glad to say that I laughed way more than I did at the previous short. There was way more in the way of interactions and actual plot than before. And if I had watched this one before, I would have been more kind to the concept of the pilot. Overall, the originals wasn't actually half bad. Someday soon, we'll be shipped to Earth where humans can play with us all day long. Hey, yo, what the fuck? Danger Planet is easily the most well animated and produced short we've looked at so far. I really like the designs in this one. It's really good at towing that light of being just gross enough at times, unlike the fun park short. The story is about an arcade machine who's about to get shipped to Earth and is excited, but unfortunately he gets discontinued just before he gets shipped out. In an attempt to escape, he teams up with this forklift robot who also got discontinued. They both crash land on some unknown planet and have to take care of this baby they found on board with them in order to escape. Already the most unique concept so far. The plot has a lot going for it, and I can easily imagine tons of scenarios you could pull from a story like this. It's not laugh out loud funny to me, and the comedy is more spoken than physical, but I think that works to the pilot's advantage. Showing more of the actual elements of the story rather than throwing 50 jokes in 7 minutes without me learning a thing about the show. It looks like something I would put on in the background while I'm doing something else, like one of those short cartoons that would come up during ad breaks, but longer. Overall, it's solid, and I wouldn't have minded it becoming a show. Joey to the World is the only short that was actually intended for Adult Swim production. It's also the short with probably the funniest ending out of all of these. <laughs> <laughs> We meet Joey, a 35-year-old kangaroo who still lives in his mom's pouch, who wants him to move out and gain some independence. The only problem is he's an idiot and kinda a douche to his mom, like... Course you can, honey buns. You're smothering me! I'm mothering you! Get out! No, my nigga, don't do that. There's a laugh track that plays in this every time a joke is said, and I'm just sitting here like, bro, when has a cartoon ever needed a fucking laugh track? I've only ever seen it done ironically, but here it's after every single joke, which makes you think they were actually just doing this shit. Look, I've been taking care of Edgar here for weeks now, right Edgar? He's that dumb yet confident type of character which always leads to some funny stuff. Some of the adult jokes did feel like they were just saying bad words to get a laugh, but for the most part, humor in this seems more focused on slapstick and situational humor. Is, is that a thing? If it isn't, I just made it a thing. So far, this one has the clearest concept with the most defined characters to match. And honestly, this one's a yes to being greenlit for me. I'm not gonna cap, this might be my least favorite one so far. I didn't laugh or smirk a single time during this short. I was stone-faced the whole fucking time. This short is composed of two jokes. Egotistical Frenchman stereotype, which has gotten so stale at this point, and this kid Frank reminding the store that his name isn't Francois. My name is Frank! Oh. My name is Frank! My name is Frank! My name is Frank! Shut the fuck up, nigga! For once! I swear to god they repeated this shit 50 times in this episode. This one is about a dork who used to be an adventurer getting back at his old partner, the window, for snaking on him or something. It's an okay concept, but they don't really do much with it except tell those two jokes I mentioned and loosely follow some kind of plot. All the characters are just super unlikable as well. They're loud, egotistical, and have no redeemable qualities at all. The animation is noticeably jumpy and drops frames a lot, which could be an artistic decision, it could be a budget reason, it could be both. Any way you slice it, I still think it looks ass. The art style doesn't do much for me either. Like, genuinely look at this design and tell me what this is. It's supposed to be a donut, but this shit don't look like a fucking donut, cuz. I don't got next on any of this. The door is basically every bad aspect of the shorts we've seen concentrated into seven minutes. Okay, so I'ma just take back everything I said about the door being the worst one I've seen so far because Maruined. I genuinely couldn't even finish this at some point. I was just skimming through this shit. This is one of the most annoying, cringeworthy things I've watched in a minute. It is so painfully 2009. The way the two main characters act is a good place to start. The girl is just the stereotypical rich girl stereotype with that annoying ass voice that every cartoon uses at least once. Ow, I'm all wet. She literally does nothing but whine, bitch, and moan. 
That's her whole character. And her younger brother is just a stereotypical rapper, which is funny, because this nigga can barely stay on beat, nor come up with a single bar that could rival fucking Blackie Speaks. Yo, sis, you bugging. Your camera can't transmit. You ain't got no connection. Your cam I can stand for a lot of things, but to attain my culture like this is sacrilege. It's not even a good satire, it's just annoying. The character design is plain ugly. Why on God's green earth? Would anyone approve this shit? I know this one is coming off as a little bit ranty. I do kind of sound like Mr. Enter from 2014, but I just don't think I have the time to actually dissect the plot and interactions for this one. I just don't think it's necessary. It's just a bunch of shouting, fighting, and bickering that makes for a very unenjoyable seven minutes. Queen Stab honestly has a little something going for it. It's about a barbarian who wants to leave their old ways of pillaging, fighting, and violence in an attempt to make friends. Comes across this village with the help of this elf, and he tries to make friends at a birthday party. The art is really different from the stuff we've seen so far. It has that children's book illustration feel to it that I've always found appealing. The animation is really smooth for a pilot too, especially at the end with this fight. It's not much, but it's handled very creatively. The story lends itself to a younger audience than the others, which is okay. It looked like it would have been very moral driven, teaching kids about people skills and making friends and all that, which is something that feels quite lacking in today's landscape of animation. But I mean, to be fair, the entire industry is lacking, so shit. Queen Stab is a very simple character, but you can squeeze a lot of stories out of a character in a situation, and it could lead to some wholesome teaching moments for kids. I don't think I would have watched much of it, but it could have definitely had a place in CM's block for sure. Manny and Khan is an interesting one. It starts off kind of slow and boring, but it actually becomes more enjoyable by the end. The story is about Manny, a half-man, half-platypus, and Khan, a leprechaun, playing a game of The Floor is Lava where they have to fetch this ball. The two share a classic bro relationship similar to another show we'll be talking about quite soon, and they bounce off each other quite well. Like, Khan is the one who tries to keep Manny in check, but even he gets caught up in their own silly little shit. There's a bunch of corny puns and random moments that happen in this one, and if this was to become a full show, I think they'd definitely have to refine the humor. There's some interesting artistic choices here, like how some of the lines overlap each other, kind of like in Star vs. the Forces of Evil. The backgrounds are also painted in a different way. I can't really explain it, but it works well for the nature setting of the show. I would have watched more of the show just to see if they actually flesh it out a bit more, so I think this would have been a yes for me. You ever watch something and just go, what was the point of any of that? I know that it could describe like five of the shorts you've seen, but this one fits that description perfectly. It's about this nerd who has to beat this walla wada weirdo, more like pedo, in a freak out competition or some shit. I won't lie, this one had me zoned out the most. The concept isn't introduced smoothly at all, it's just thrust at the audience and we're just expected to roll with it. The characters are all boring too, not a single quirk or distinct trait in sight. The art isn't doing the short any favors either, the line quality is inconsistent and not in a good or charming way like okay. KO. It just kind of looks cheap. I don't know whether I'm just tired writing the script at this point, but there's just nothing more I can say about this one. That's a bit racist. Yes is a welcome return to form for the Cartoon Institute. It follows a merman who takes this family on adventures in order to help more people say yes to their dreams. Corny, lame. It sounds really fucking corny just saying that, but that is the direction the show takes, so it checks out. Their first task is to help this robot that belongs to this Japanese man from before become an emo. It sounds weird, but it's not done too badly. There's some neat running gags like this grandma actually being an emo artist, to the two parents not really getting the whole idea, but just going along with it anyways. The concept lends itself to being very moral driven, and I could put this alongside other shows like Spin Stab and Many and Khan. The art kind of reminds me of that Canadian art style that was popular back in the day. Yeah, shows like 16, Garage Band, and Total Drama all rocking this kind of art style. I don't know if this was a show I would have watched even as a kid alongside the bangers I had growing up. It's just I. Alright, I've saved the best for last type shit. If you've been paying attention or even know a thing about the Cartoon Institute, you'll know that the two Cartoon Network originals that spawned from the Cartoon Institute were Uncle Grandpa and fucking regular show. The duality of man like shit. While I was watching the Uncle Grandpa short, all I was doing in my mind was ticking the boxes of how many things I could remember. Like the Levan, I remember, Flying Tiger, check. That thing from Secret Modern Fort Awesome, check, but I really don't want to remember anything from that show. In fact, the short is way less chaotic and batshit crazy than the actual show. But I thought it would be the other way around. It's still quite dumb with lots of toilet humor and fart jokes though. But there's also a lot of adult jokes in it too, surprisingly. That's your Uncle Grandpa for ya! drops in, shows you a good time, and then you never see him again, just like your father. God damn. There's still tons of things missing, like his fanny pack isn't able to speak yet, there's no pizza Steve, there's no Gus. My name is Gustavo, but you can call me Sus.
I feel like if I saw this one as a kid, I would have been like, yo, this Uncle Grandpa shit looks kind of funny. But watching it through the lens of having already grown up with the acid trip of a show, I'm just here like, it's kind of neat. And last but not least is Regular Show. The pilot feels like just another episode of Regular Show with how much of the characterization and settings were already established. Mordecai and Rigby, Pop, Spence, and Skips, they're all pretty much the same as their syndicated versions. And it's still just as absurd as the actual show. With Mordecai and Rigby fighting over a chair by playing rock, paper, scissors, but tying a hundred times which releases a rock, paper, scissors, demon that destroys the entire park. If this shit was 11 minutes and aired in season 2, nobody would have batted an eye. I think it's a testament to how much the creators had already figured out. So often will a show find its footing during its run, but regular show always had the same energy. They always knew what it wanted to be. Until they didn't. It's pretty obvious that this is my favorite short from the Cartoon Institute, and I think most people would agree with me. The Cartoon Institute is a really interesting piece of CN's history. It springboarded two CN originals, and one of them ended up being part of their big three or four, depending if you put Steven Universe up there too. It came at a time where the studio was experimenting with live action, which was received with a resounding no from most. This is another big risk, producing so many shorts without even knowing how many of them would be invested in, plus the fact that they needed something to stick meant that it had to work, and it kinda did. There are some hidden gems in here that I appreciate for what they are and could have been a part of the network. One can only speculate how well they would have done, but they're still good pieces that deserve some attention. I've been Papercut, have a good day, and take care.